Cliff height. You're climbing in the high Sierra when you suddenly find yourself at the edge of a fog shrouded cliff. To find the height of this cliff, you drop a rock from the top. Eight seconds later, you hear the sound of the rock hitting the ground at the foot of the cliff. Part A. If you ignore air resistance, how high is the cliff if the speed of sound is 330 meters per second? Part B. Suppose you had ignored the time it takes the sound to reach you. In that case, would you have overestimated or underestimated the height of the cliff? Explain. Okay. Now, here is a picture of the cliff. So we drop uh, basically um, a rock from the top. You can see here its initial velocity is zero. It's going to hit the ground. When it hits the ground, there is sound created. You hear the sound uh, at the point where it was dropped. And from this information, you try to determine the height of the cliff. So for part A, where I'm taking into account the sound velocity, the total time it takes for the uh, rock, for the sound to reach me, is the time of fall of the rock plus the time it takes for the sound to reach me after the, ro the rock hits the ground. And uh, for the, the time it takes for the sound to reach me, the distance the sound travels is h vertically. It's the speed of sound times uh, the time it takes to reach. So the time for sound travel is uh, basically the h value that I'm trying to measure divided by the speed of sound, 330 meters per second. On the other hand, uh, I have v0 is equal to uh, 0, and velocity of the rock as a function of time is minus gt because I have a gravitational acceleration. And so I have a constant acceleration minus g. The distance we travel from time t equals 0 to the time of flight minus integral minus gt dt. This is basically equal to minus 1 over 2 g time of flight squared. So the distance the rock travels, delta y, is minus h. The final uh, position is 0. The initial position is h. So 0 minus h minus h. This is equal to minus 1 over 2 g time of flight squared. So the time of flight is square root 2h over g. Okay. The total time it takes for uh, me to hear the sound is, uh, after I drop it, is 8 seconds. So this is equal to square root 2h over g plus h divided by the speed of sound. So you can see that the total time, t, t total, minus h over speed of sound, parentheses, uh, squared, must be equal to um, 2h divided by g. Okay. So uh, if I take this square, this is going to be a t total uh, square uh, minus 2ht total over speed of sound.
and I have plus h square over speed of sound square. This must be equal to 2h over g. Okay, so if I multiply both sides with a uh, speed of sound uh, square, uh, this is going to give me a quadratic equation for h, so I will obtain h square uh, minus 2h uh, speed of sound times t total uh, plus speed of sound square t total square this must be equal to 2h speed of sound square over g Okay, so I can solve this equation uh, for h. Um, I can basically rewrite this uh, in h parentheses. So first term is h square. Then I have uh, the h term plus h parentheses. This is going to give me uh, minus 2 speed of sound t total and then I have a minus 2 ps square over g plus speed of sound square t total square is equal to 0 okay so uh, to solve this equation for h, uh, I calculate the uh, discriminant delta, which is uh, 2 speed of sound t total uh, plus 2 uh, speed of sound square over g. Uh, this parenthesis square, so it's b square minus 4ac, minus 4, 1 times speed of sound square, t total square, minus 4 speed of sound square, t total square. And if I calculate this, this is uh, 2 times 330 meters per second uh, times t total, which is 8. Uh, plus uh, 2 times 330 squared uh, divided by 9.8 meters per second squared parentheses squared minus 4 uh, times 330 squared times 8 squared which is uh, t total squared okay so this is going to give me um, 5280 plus um, 22224.5 parentheses squared minus uh, large number 27 848 400 and square root of the discriminant is 
26,993.5. So the solution for H is uh, minus uh, B, so which is uh, basically 2 speed of sound times t total uh, plus 2 speed of sound square over g and uh, we will take the um, plus or minus square root discriminant over 2 so this is mathematically the solution uh, and uh, we also divide these by 2 because it's minus b square uh, plus or minus square root discriminant divided by 2a which is a is 1 here so it has to be divided by 2 so this gives me speed of sound times t total plus speed of sound square over g uh, plus or minus 13496.8 square root of the determinant and uh, this gives me 330 times 8 plus uh, 330 square over 9.8 uh, plus or minus 13,496.8. And uh, we're going to take the uh, negative root here because the positive one will give us an uh, very large numbers so positive uh, not physical uh, because gives too large value so I take the negative root so this becomes 13,752.2 uh, minus 13,400 96.8 so the answer becomes 256 meters okay Now let's move on to part B of the problem. In part B, we're going to ignore the speed of sound. If we ignore uh, the time travel, the, the travel time for the uh, sound waves, then the t total will be equal to t fall. And in that case, we will have h is equal to uh, 1 over 2 g time of flight squared. So this will give us uh, 1 over 2 9.8 times 8 squared. And the answer is 314 meters in this case. Now you can see that this is basically an overestimation. Uh, the actual height is 256, so it's larger than the uh, height that I calculate when I take into account the time, uh, the travel time of the sound. So this is basically overestimated. Therefore, uh, we can uh, conclude that the sound travel time should not be 
neglected. So part B was asking me, is it overestimated or underestimated? Uh, you can see that this number is greater than the actual number when I take into account the sound travel time. So uh, the sound travel time, TS, uh, should not be neglected. Okay, so this is our conclusion. Now, to summarize, we're trying to measure the cliff height. We're uh, on top of a cliff. Uh, we drop, it's uh, foggy, uh, so we don't see the bottom. We drop a rock from the top. Eight seconds later, we hear the sound of the rock hitting the ground at the foot of the cliff. And first, we calculate how high the cliff should be if the speed of sound is 330 meters per second. Second, what would happen if we ignore the travel time of the sound to calculate this height? So, uh, the total time is fall time plus this, uh, the travel time of the sound, which is uh, the total height h is equal to speed of sound times travel time of the sound. So, it is h over 330. Uh, the distance the, the rock is traveling is h, which is 1 over 2 gt squared, the uh, fall time squared. The fall time is squared to h over g. Basically, we solve the equation h over speed of sound plus square root to h over g equals the total uh, time. And when we solve this equation, we find that h should be 256 meters. Uh, and here I take the uh, negative root because the positive root turns out to be uh, very very large uh, so uh, basically this is not physical uh, for if you neglect the the travel time of the sound then the total time would be t fall which is 1 over 2 uh, gives me 1 over 2 g t fall square equals h so h gives uh, h I obtain is 314 meters, which is larger than the actual value, so it's overestimated. Therefore, the travel time of the sound should not be neglected.